If you want to hear my answers to the beauty brand tag, then stick around. Hi there, it's Elen, and yes, I'm doing a tag video today. And this tag was created by Tara Brook. I had never come across Tara Brook until I heard about this tag. And so I am very intrigued. I read the questions and I thought, okay, I can, I can get behind this tag and I would really like to answer the questions, especially because I thought they were thought provoking. And I would say it's one of the toughest set of tag questions I've come across and not because they're personal. I think because they really made me think. Now I did not prepare my answers because I think that the struggle of trying to come up with an answer is, is part of the fun of tags. So let's get into it. Let me see how many tag questions there are. It's 15. Yeah, it is 15. And I've got my sheet here, but just with the questions, nothing, nothing else. I didn't write anything in here. And um, so let's get going. If you do want to do this tag, I will have all the questions in the description box for you to take a look at. All right, uh, and I always put them on the screen as well. So you'll, you'll be able to follow along and see the questions as I go through them. All right, I think I might be stalling. Well, since I'm stalling, if you like the content on this channel and you're not subscribed yet, I would love for you to consider doing that. And if you do like tag videos, please give me a thumbs up and that will let me know to do some more of these. Okay, now I'm out of stalling tactics. So let's get into the questions. Number one, think back to when you first started your makeup collection. Are there any brands you used then that you still use today? There is one brand that I am pretty sure is defunct at this point, and that's Ultima 2. And that is the first ever brand that I used. And that was for eyeshadow. And I was, it was super expensive. They were simple one shadow compacts and they would cost at that time $20 Canadian which is a lot of money <laughs> that's about 14 US <clears throat> and uh, and I would save up my money and and buy that eyeshadow and looking back it was so dumb because I was a teenager and I had no money uh, but another brand uh, that is still around is Quo Q-U-O it is a Canadian brand a uh, brand from Shoppers Drug Mart and it, I still definitely use the Quo brand. As a matter of fact, the brow powder I have in my brows right now is a Quo product and I have many more in my collection. I think I've answered the question. Oh, and I should say Maybelline. Maybelline was lip product and mascara um, was another brand that I have used since I was a teenager. So I, I guess that that would be it. Number two, it's a follow-up question. Which brands have you moved on from? Well, Ultima 2, obviously, because it's no longer around. But I would say that Quo, I have moved on from for eyeshadows. I, they just don't speak to me anymore, and I'm more likely to use them for a more typical base makeup stuff, like uh, the cotton rounds or squares I use from Quo, makeup remover, uh, nail polish remover, nail polish, just basic types of products. I use Quo. I do use Quo uh, brow powder and um, highlighter and that kind of thing, but I don't use, I don't have any Quo products that are really for color face products, if that makes sense. I, I'm not big on the brand for that purpose. I think I have a, uh, one face palette from them, a, a trio face palette, but that's pretty much it. Yeah. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Number three, are there any brands you thought were so expensive that you'd never buy anything from them, but now consider at least one of their products to be a holy grail? If so, which brand and which product? That I'd never buy anything from them? Okay, well, I'd probably, I'd probably say Guerlain. I ended up springing, and I have it right behind me. 
I ended up springing for the Meteorite, the beads uh, that help you just kind of finish your look. And I don't use them every day, but I am very happy to have them. I, they're a very luxe product for me. And every single time I do use them, and I don't use them every day, but and the fragrance is always so nice. I consider it a real treat and I really quite like them. And this product has, the experiential aspect of the product has me, made me think of other high-end brand items that I think would be super exciting. So Guerlain is a definite, uh, like for example, Teint de Chanel is one that I am drawn to. I probably won't get it for a while because I have a lot of cream products, but it is kind of on my radar. And another brand I would bring up is Pat McGrath. And the only reason I have a number of Pat McGrath items is because they go for 50% off or better. Same thing with Natasha Denona. But it's not, it's not brands that I seek out proactively at full price nor their full size products. So for example, the Mothership 5 from Pat McGrath, I would love to own. I really would. But I cannot pay over $100 for, I think it's 10 shadows. I, I just, I can't, I can't. I have a physical reaction to that kind of expense. Same thing with uh, Natasha Denona. I, I can't pay over $100 for a palette or nearly $100 for a mini palette. Like it's just, it's just too much money. I think the Love one that was just released is $87. And I just, I, with tax, it's a hundred bucks. And I just, I can't justify that kind of coin for, for a palette. I just can't. So the Mothership 5, I have to say that it is super aspirational for me. I really do want it. It's the only one out of the big palettes of Pat McGrath's that really call to me both the, the packaging and the contents but some sort of miracle is gonna to have to happen because I just can't justify bringing it into my collection. And I obviously don't have trouble <laughs> spending on makeup, but that one just, it's just, it's gonna remain in the ether for me. And it's just the way it's gonna be, at least for now. But yeah, to, to, to kind of close off on it, yeah, I think this one is kind of a holy grail. I really love it when I want to have a special feel for the finish of a makeup look. Yes. Do I have any other holy grails? Um, I would say that Becca highlighters, if I want to know my highlighter is going to be on point, Becca highlighters are it and they're not cheap. I wouldn't say they're luxury, but they're certainly high end. And I think I'll stop, I'll stop it at that. One more brand for number three that I want to mention is the Linda Halvari makeup. Um, I really did not think that I would ever own anything of hers. I have the Enchanted Secrets and this one, which is the Metallic Mysteries, the original. And her products are absolutely fantastic. And she ended up having a, a great sale where I was able to pick up this quad and the other quad that, again, is Enchanted Secrets and I was over the moon. I really, really enjoy this brand. I do think it's overpriced, but I, I stand by the product and I do recommend it. It is really, really good. Number four is what brand perfectly encapsulates your current makeup aesthetic? Explain. <laughs> That's hilarious. I just finished this look. Uh, as soon as it's available, I will uh, link it right here. It's Cleona. Cleona Cosmetics really captures my current makeup aesthetic. And I think, did I put it back? Here's one. First off, can we take a moment for the front of this palette? And where's my phone? It's also on my phone. So you can tell that I am smitten with the aesthetics of the brand and also obviously the brand itself. So I have um, three of these palettes. Well, one's on the, on the way. I absolutely love the singles. The only reason this is not full is because I took some out for uh, an individual who wanted a Cleona look. Um, 
Tracy and so I created that for her and so I'll, I'll show you Tracy's shadows. <laughs> At least the ones of hers that I have. So here we go. So I transferred them in here for the purposes of that video. And Cleona shadows are absolutely beautiful and I, I have um, two other palettes of their stuff and a bunch of multi-chromes. Their mattes are beautiful, their shimmers and metallics are beautiful, their duochromes are beautiful. Everything of Cleona's I like. There's nothing or like or more, like or love. There's nothing in everything that I've received from them from any collection that's been a dud. Another uh, product of theirs that is amazing is the Aftershock Shadows. and th Those are highlighters technically, but I use them as eyeshadow toppers. And every single time I use Aftershock Shadows, I get compliments. Strangers, friends, family, I get compliments. It's, it's really quite amazing. Use an Aftershock Shadow that is a color that suits you on the inner to center lid. And it almost doesn't matter what else you have on your eye. It looks beautiful. And a close second to Cleona would be Color Drain. The Queen of Hearts, the Cheers to the Beauty, all of those eyeshadows are absolutely beautiful. And I am expecting as well to get uh, more from the Power Collection. That nine pan palette really calls to me. And so when it becomes available at a decent price, it uh, she will be mine is all I have to say. So anyway, that's um, Cleona definitely number one. Uh, Colored Rain I hold as well in very, very high regard. The, the Vivid pigments, oh my goodness, just anyway, those are two fantastic companies. We're now at number six. Are there any brands you haven't wanted to try purely because you don't like their packaging? <laughs> yeah. I will have to say Jeffree Star. Like, I'm not a big fan of his to begin with. Don't come for me. We all have our opinions. So I don't like the bulky word packaging. Uh, it is kind of weird and really not all that practical. I don't think the value for money is, is all that much there either. And also, what are they called? They're not Glam Glow. Glam Glow? The one with the um, taco packaging and the cake packaging and just the food burger packaging. I don't get it. I think it's really weird. And I don't think I want to associate food with makeup all that much. Um, you know, like a full plate of something. I don't think of tacos when I think makeup. I just don't see how it all goes together or pizza or, or any of that stuff. So I am not, there is no Nothing about that company that calls to me, put it that way. So, yeah. Is there anything else? I have some beefs about the benefit packaging. I don't like the box packaging for their highlighters and their bronzers and blushes. I really don't care for that. I did get the Cheekathon, but that it's more accessible. It's not deep with a brush, I, I don't like that packaging. Actually, a lot of benefit packaging I don't really like. I also don't like the packaging for the balm. I know it's blasphemous. I just don't care for the kitschy weird, weirdness of, uh, of the brand. I just don't. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it. And I don't like round, big round palettes. Like weird shaped palettes they don't tend to do it for me in any way, shape, or form, unless they're more like a compact size. Like, this is okay, because it's small. But an eyeshadow palette that's round, that's bigger than that, like the Urban Decay Elements, drives me crazy. Okay, number seven. We are almost halfway there. Uh, is there a brand you've only tried because their packaging lured you in? If so, were you happy with the actual product? There are a number of companies that lured me in with their packaging. I would say like a lot of companies. I would say Smashbox. Um, they have sometimes some really beautiful collections. I did get sucked in for the Rosemantic highlighter when it that came out. It was the Smashbox of Lada collaboration. Absolutely beautiful. I like the product and I really enjoyed the packaging. 
Urban Decay has some really innovative package design and I do, as a matter of course, like the Urban Decay packaging and the contents, except for that one exception, the Elements palette. I don't know what they were thinking with that one. Although it's easy to, to hold on to despite the fact that it's rounded, you can almost hold it like a compact because the end of it is conducive to putting your hand around it. But um, I, I've liked so far everything I've tried from Smashbox. I've liked so far every, everything I've tried from Urban Decay. I'm trying to think of other packaging that lured me in. I do like Buxom. I like the interchangeable shadows from the Buxom palettes. I think th those are really good. And I'm talking about the the five pan or six pan, six pan, I think, palettes. Let me just grab one. So I really like this packaging from Buxom and the fact that you can, um, there are six shades and you can pull them out and um, change them out if you want to. So I think that that's uh, a really neat aspect of these this packaging. Any other packaging? Um, I think that Too Faced is kind of interesting as far as their tin packaging, the um, sweet peach, the chocolate bar, that kind of thing. Uh, actually, even uh, the Just Peachy, the mats, the 12 pan mats is beautiful packaging. I think it's the best packaging they've come out with and that really um, sucked me in and I'm very happy because it's a beautiful matte palette. Now, one thing I have to say, though, is I was lured in by the Pat McGrath packaging. I thought it was beautiful, the six pan packaging. Gorgeous. I hate using it. So th these guys right here, this thing, I can't stand the fact that this doesn't open completely. It's ridiculous. So um, beautiful. It's, it's a beautiful packaging concept on the outside but on the inside, poorly executed, and the shadow names are not even under the pans. It's a plastic over top, and that is the signs of a cheap brand. So it's it's a very confusing brand. It's cheap. It goes on the cheap, but yet it's super high end. So I, this brand is really an enigma, and the only reason I have three of them is because they came on half price. That's it. We are now at number eight. Some would say drugstore and mid-range prices are starting to overlap. What drugstore beauty brands are guilty of making this happen? And what are your thoughts on rising drugstore makeup prices? I would say that uh, Quo, which is that Shoppers Drug Mart brand, I think they overpriced their, their products. I think Physician Formula, Physicians Formula overprices their products. Although their butter bronzer, if there's a product of theirs that's pretty awesome, the butter bronzer, it's worth every penny. Although I say that I only buy it when it's 40% off, but it's, it's, um, it's worth its price tag as far as being price conscious as a consumer, period. And I think that drugstore products need to stay at drugstore prices. If they want to get out of that range, then they have to be positioned in another store or another section of the store. I just don't think that a $20 bronzer, $20 uh, liner should be considered drugstore. Not even close. Everything should be $10 or less in my opinion. Make make the products smaller maybe, but make them affordable. And one company that is obviously doing it and doing a great job and should be a an example for other companies is e.l.f. You can get a $10 eyeshadow palette. You can get a $5 liner. You can get a $5 mascara. I mean, you can end skincare. You can get very affordable skincare. And one of the ways they do it is they have smaller containers and that's fine. You can get the products that you want to try without breaking the bank. And I think that that's uh, really great on them and they have sales on a regular basis. So hats off to e.l.f. I think they do a great job and they manage to make their packaging very, very attractive 
despite the low price point. So kudos to them. Number nine, with anti-consumerism and an eat the rich mentality starting to take hold on YouTube or in the YouTube beauty space, are there any brands you still feel a loyalty towards? If so, why? I am going to say Cleona Cosmetics and Color Drain. I think those are two brands that are absolutely fantastic and I have some favoritism towards indie brands. I'm going to say a close third is going to be uh, Urban Decay. I think that they have a good value for money. And now let, let me be clear on the value for money. I think a lot of stuff from Urban Decay, in from for my purposes, is overpriced, but I think their eyeshadow palettes, they bring some good ideas and they are they have their moments of innovation, like for me, the heavy metals palette two Christmas, three Christmases ago was, was awesome. The um, elements palette, the inside, I mean, I appreciate having tried the round palette, I just don't like the round palette, but what shadows were inside were fantastic. Um, the Born to Run palette, great idea, well executed. So I like companies that try to do something different and don't try to do the same thing over and over again. And so for example, I'll, I'll say Too Faced, they'll rehash and benefit the same, actually benefit I think is even worse, they'll rehash a concept to death as opposed to doing something, having it be iconic, standing on its own, and then moving on to something else. And I think that that is a much better approach. Even Charlotte Tilbury, Oh my goodness, I'm so tired of everything being pillow talk this and pillow talk that. Move on. Move on and create something new. Number 10. Have you ever felt betrayed by a brand? If so, what happened? Yeah, the whole Kat Von D thing. Uh, or KVD Beauty, whatever you want to call it now. I think that there's a certain responsibility when you own a company uh, as to how you present yourself. And as a YouTuber, I found it extremely painful to have purchased products that I really couldn't, didn't feel like I could use or showcase on my channel. And I was very resentful uh, of her for what she chose to do and how she chose to present herself not simply not realizing that she is the brand and the brand is her or was. And, uh, and I'll give you a specific thing that dro drove me absolutely crazy. The pastel goth had gone uh, um, off the market. It was done. It was a limited edition product. And Sephora Canada ended up restocking it. Uh, I guess they had the, the last of what Sephora had and, and Sephora Canada got them and I bought some and I was going to do giveaways with them and they have been sitting there because all of a sudden it was terrible to promote or talk about anything KVD and it just angered me to no end because I couldn't use the products I had uh, on camera. I couldn't, didn't feel right about doing uh, a giveaway with the the product, and it has left such a sour taste in my mouth that I have a lot of trouble with even the concept of the brand now because her interest in the company apparently there are no more ties she's getting nothing uh, anymore from KVD I am starting to slowly think that I can bring back the, the brand on this channel but I think it's going to take me a month or two before I dip my toe in the water and start um, using the products on camera again it was a really bitter pill to swallow especially when you've sunk hundreds of dollars in a brand that you want to use and it just didn't feel worth it as a YouTuber. Flat out. Flat out. Any other brand I felt betrayed by? I think that's it. Next, um, 
Number 11, are there any brands that you feel give off exclusivity vibes, making you feel like you aren't cool or pretty enough to buy from? If so, which brand and why? I don't have those kinds of hangups. I, I really don't. Cool or pretty enough. You know what? I, at this point in my life, I don't give a you know what. I will buy and wear whatever the heck I want to buy and wear. That's it. Like, no, no. Number 12. What's worse, choice fatigue, which is exhaustion from too many makeup brands uh, releasing stuff, or a lackluster quarterly launch from a brand you're typically excited about? I think they're both bad. I definitely r resent too many releases from a given brand. Like, I don't know what the hell's going on with Anastasia or Anastasia. Ugh. I, I went... I bought some palettes from them, too, recently. Guess what I bought? I bought the Soft Glam, and I bought the Modern Renaissance. That's it. I don't care about any of their new releases. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't. There's only one that I have thought of getting, which is the Jackie Ina, but because of who it is that is behind the palette, i.e. Jackie Ina, I just don't like her style, I love the colors in the palette, but I just don't like her style. So that that's um, one thing that's keeping me because I think that palette is beautiful. I just wouldn't really like using it. Um, but Anastasia is, is a great example of that. Too many releases all at once. It was like, it were like being gluttonous and expecting a ton of money from the market. And then when it comes to lackluster quarterly launches, well, lackluster, the way I see it is, it might be lackluster for me, but it doesn't mean it's lackluster for everybody else. I'll give you an example. The Charlotte Tilbury releases are a yawner to me. And a bunch of the Natasha Denona releases are a yawner to me. They don't excite me. I couldn't give a you know what. And so, yeah, I would say it's more of choice fatigue of a bunch of products that might be interesting if they had their time in the limelight, but because there's too many of them over and over and over again, you just kind of go, well, pff, it's, there's no point. I just, it's all too much and I just don't care. Even if each one of those products could be great quality and I could end up loving them, it just feels overwhelming to even choose one out of the <laughs> spewing of makeup that certain companies uh, come up with. So that's my take on it anyway. Number 13, have brand trips or sponsored videos ever made you actually interested in a product slash beauty launch the brand was promoting? No, benefit, no, it doesn't work. If anything, it turns me right off. What does a brand trip have to do with the product? Nothing. If you want to fly people over to do a, to have a meeting, and that meeting's going to end um, with a like a social event afterwards, a get together, um, maybe it's part of a conference or something like that. I get it. But to fly people for five to seven days somewhere out in the sun and expecting them to vlog about it, whatever. What does that have to do with mascara? What does that have to do with bronzer? What does that have to do with eyeliner? I, it, I don't get it. And every time I look at Benefit products now, I just think about that stupid brand trip or, or, or um, trip associated release. It just, it just turns me right off. Number 14, are there any indie brands you hope to see sold at Ulta or Sephora in the future? Well, instead of Ulta and Sephora, I will say Shoppers Drug Mart and Sephora. One of them that I was really interested in that just made it to Shoppers Drug Mart is Revolution. I am so impressed that Revolution is now at Shoppers Drug Mart, and I am looking forward to trying some of their eyeshadow palettes at some point. I think it's only online right now, but I'm really happy with that. And the fact that Shoppers Drug Mart is bringing in more brands to be even more competitive with um, Sephora. Right now, I think the major benefit for Sephora is the 
variety of makeup and the number of brands because Shoppers Drug Mart has a lot of luxury mid-range and drugstore, uh, but the, the range of mid to high for Sephora is bigger. And so I really appreciate the fact that the um, that Shoppers Drug Mart is bringing new brands at all three tiers um, a lot more. They seem to be focused on it a lot more than they used to be. Um, recently, The Bomb is a, a new one that came in. And uh, there were a few more that came in recently. Like I said, Revolutions. Oh, um, Lorac came... Um, in recently to Shop Shoppers Drug Mart. I'm trying to think of anything else. I know there's a few more that I'm just not thinking of. Oh, Mar uh, I was going to say Mars. NARS last year. Yeah, I think last year was the first year where they were um, quite present in Shoppers Drug Mart. So anyway, I um, indie brands, I, you know, I would like to see Colored Rain, make it into maybe Sephora. Um, I don't want to say any and all indie brands because I think that that can destroy them. I think that there's a specialness uh, to... Indie brands are special. They're gems, they're innovators, their heart and soul goes into the products. Not all, but a lot. And when they're small to medium businesses, I don't want them to get to Ulta, Shoppers Drug Mart, or Sephora. It will kill their spirit. If they're pretty huge, like ColourPop, then, then I don't care go wherever you want. But part of the reason I'm willing to pay a premium price for an indie brand is their independence. And the moment they have a contract with a store, when they're small, the store owns them. And I think it fundamentally changes the offering for the small brand. I think that they are more into trying to create product for the demand as opposed to innovating uh, their product lines and I think it can be really really tough and I think that's why you see indie brands that had agreements with larger um, commercial entities commercial retail entities uh, terminate them so yeah uh, one brand that I wouldn't mind seeing as well in Shoppers Drug Mart although they probably have an exclusivity with Sephora is uh, Huda Beauty I wouldn't mind seeing their stuff in uh, in Sephora. Um, yeah, I could keep on and on. I think I've answered the question, so let's move on. Number 15, the last question, yay! If you could give any beauty brand a rebranding, which brand would it be and what elements of the brand would you modify? I would say the balm. But the thing is, a lot of people love their kind of kitsch packaging. They get a real kick out of it, so I will leave them alone. Just like I will leave, I think it's Glam Light, I'll leave them alone too. Let's see. You know, I'll go back to KVD. I don't know what they're trying to do with the initials. The initials are Kat Von D. I know the company's probably trying to spare packaging and save their investment of products that are already uh, created and dyes and casts that are already created, but God, move on, move on, rename the company. It's always going to mean Kat Von D and, and I think that they need a full overhaul. And I think that they want to ride the wave of brand awareness and I really don't know at this point whether it would actually help sales or whether it's going to continue to hinder sales. I really have no idea. Um, I feel for them. I think that there's, I think Kendo it's called, the company that owns the brand. Uh, I feel for them because that association has turned pretty costly for them, I think. But yeah, I think that they're they're going to really have to think about their existence in this marketplace and whether 
continuing on with the branding they have right now is worth it or if they should do a complete rebranding. That's, that's where I'm at with that uh, last question. So. so that is it. My answers to the 15 questions. Thank you so much to Tara Brooke for the 15 questions for this tag in general. I really enjoyed uh, answering the questions. They were certainly making me noodle. <laughs> and if you are interested in those questions, you would like to answer them, I tag you if you have a YouTube channel. Or I also invite you to leave your comments, your thoughts, your opinions in the comments below. I read all of them and I look forward to interacting with you there. Other than that, I will say thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it every single time. And I do look forward to seeing you in the next video. But for now, take care. Thank you.